Hey, this is Jeff. Let's get a review on this Dobsonian here. Um, I get a great review, and it turns out my uh, boom mic <laughs> wasn't working. Um, so I could do it all over again. Maybe it'll see more practice. Okay, but if you were to ask me what's a great scope for beginners or the most versatile scope for, say, advanced, uh, not advanced, but, you know, experienced uh, observers, an 8-inch Dobsonian is a fantastic scope. Don't. If I had... Just one scope would probably be, well, I'd go for 10 inch or 12 inch, it's just money. Um, but a Dobsonian is a fantastic scope for a couple of reasons. One, they're inexpensive. Uh, two, um, mirrors, unlike cheap glass, tend not to have chromatic ab aberration. So you can go to very high powers. Uh, the theory is, or the rule of thumb is, uh, for every millimeter of aperture, say, um, this is 200 millimeters, 8 inches, 200 millimeters, you get two powers of magnification. So 200 times 2 is 400. You can get to 400 on this, 400 uh, magnification, okay? With an inexpensive refractor, you can't get there. You know, it may be advertised as 536 power. It probably tops out for bright objects like Jupiter or the moon, maybe 40 power, okay? So the great thing about it is you can go to the theoretical limits, diffraction limiting, uh, on the aperture. So 8 inch, 200 millimeters, 400. I'm pretty sure I can get here on this. Okay, um, And that's plenty of power. That I have an 18 inch there in the corner. I'm almost never past 300. So even the big mirrors, you know, 300, 400. You know, experts get better, but I can't. Um, the other thing, uh, they tend to have shorter focal lengths than, say, Schmidt Cassegrain. Um, so you can get wider field of view. And that is and everyone always says, beginners say, hey, how high can that go? What magnification can you go? I told you on this, to its limit, 400. Uh, but one of the other, one of the more important things is how wide can you go? Pushing a scope through, a mil uh, say, the Milky Way or a star field, uh, wide is good. Okay? And with the Dobsonian, a Newtonian, you can go with, uh, you can go from the very wide to its limits on aperture as far as magnification. So all the way from wide to narrow. The other thing is with the Dobsonian is there is a, a um, you know, I like to say that when, you know, you've seen the photos. The photos are amazing. Um, and typically if you look at something other than Jupiter, Saturn, and the moon, uh, thing fuzzies, galaxies, and all that, they're smudges. Okay, it can be kind of disappointing. But the inspiring part about that is those are objects in the universe, and they're millions of light years away, you know, things out of our galaxy, or, or tens of thousands of light years away in our galaxy, depends on what you're looking at, but there is a train of photons from that object that goes, we're washing them, but we can't see them, but there's enough of those photons, it's a direct train from that object into the telescope, in this case it bounces off the back mirror, off the secondary mirror, and into your eyeball. It is a connected photon train from the object to your eyeball, it's not, you know, photons of a paper of a, or electronics or a screen. It is a photon train from the object to your eyeball. You are really connected to that object, okay? Now, you can get that in any telescope, but the great thing about a Dobsonian that you can push is there is a greater connection be, um, by touching the scope and moving it, okay, and seeing the sky... The actual stuff, your hands, help make that connection to your body. I know it sounds weird, but it's connected to your eye. The telescope's connected to your hand. You're involved. It's, it's a really great connection that you really don't get with hand controllers, motors, computers. They're nice to have, but there are some things like there are two galaxies, M81 and M82. They're real close to each other. If you use a hand controller, to get rid of backlash, it goes one direction, so if you want to go from here to here, it goes the other direction, the other direction, and it kind of spirals there. You would never guess that it's here to here. Because of the gears, it kind of takes this circuitous route. Now, with pushing it by hand, you actually get a feel for it. Okay. And one of the greatest things you can do is push a Dobsonian in a dark sky through a, a galaxy field, like Virgo. You can just, it's amazing, it's like galaxy, 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 galaxy. And that is, you, it's so hard to do with a hand controller. And it just doesn't feel the same. Uh, looking at, say, the Veil Nebula, it's big. 
and you really you can't catch it in one eyepiece. You, I mean, one field of view. You got to move it. Okay. So there is this connection. There's this feel. There's this visceral impact of touching a scope, moving it. It connects you to the sky better. So it's you know that is something that you don't see in the spec sheet, but it's really amazing. And and this is is an experience that's really great. It's fantastic. And the Dobsonian. Uh, what are the what are the negatives on this? Eh, it's big. You see, it's heavy. Okay. A minor one is that the mirrors can get uh, out of alignment, and collimating is something you either need a friend to check out and fix for you, or you have to learn it. A couple tools. Laser makes it really easy. They have laser collimators, fifty to sixty dollars. Really easy to learn it. Uh, but again, sixty dollars for the real easy. So if you're willing to spend sixty bucks, not an issue. The other thing is its size. You can see it's big. Okay. So, um, oh, by the way, this does have a uh, two-inch focuser on this, so you can put a two-inch uh, single-speed Crayford. Um, you can put two-inch eyepieces in there, which are really good for the really wide fields, okay? Uh, Low-power wide field, uh, so it will accept a two-inch uh, eyepiece. All right, but the challenge on this is its size, okay? It's not a compact scope. It's big. It's not all that heavy, but it is really awkward, okay? Um, it's really not that much bigger than a tripod. And a refractor, okay. But it is, you know, it is heavy. It's bulky. Um, so you can, if you're big and strong, or young, or just young, uh, it's not that heavy. It's just really, really awkward. Okay. So you can carry it around. Uh, it may want to swing, so don't let it swing. Use your body to keep it from, uh, you know, rotating forward. Okay. And the other thing you can do, the smarter thing to do, is you can take this off. Now. I, when I first saw these, I've never had one of these. Are a, this is the Orion XT Classic Springs. I was thinking, lame, not really cool, but it's really easy to take it off. Okay. So you can get it, you know, carry it. Two piece, two trips. Don't. Uh, there's no point in doing this. What I'm doing here, you don't want to take it into two pieces and then carry it in one trip. Uh, keep it in one piece, carry it in one trip. Uh, but if you're going to um, take it apart, these springs are actually quite easy. So I'm going to put it in like this, and it depends. If you put it in this way, then your eyepiece is towards the ground. You don't want that. Put the eyepiece upwards, okay? okay? And then it's real simple to just lock it on like so. You're ready to observe. So carry it out and pop the top off. And you are ready to observe. Okay. Um, no power. Uh, they do have guided versions of these with a computer. Um, finder scope. May have to align that with the scope. You don't want the pointer scope ending pointing that way and the scope pointing that way, so you got to line that up. There's instructions on the web on that. You can also eyeball it, lining up on the back. Um, yeah, it's a really robust, capable scope, and it has a a feel to it that is just it's just it's a it's a it's a deeper experience. Um, and let's see, um, you can put a real heavy eyepiece here. It's going to want to go nose heavy, but there are you can throw magnets on here. There are magnetic weights. You just pop it on there to balance it out. Uh, if you wanted to do astrophotography, you can get equatorial platforms. They tend to be rather expensive. Um, yeah, by the time you spend six hundred dollars on a uh, equatorial platform, maybe in, for astrophotography, maybe you, you do something different, uh, different scope, motorized scope, uh, uh, equatorial scope. Uh, but you know, it's just really versatile. It's a great scope.